Welcome back for another episode of the Van Diemen Formula Ford restoration. And on this episode, it is all about the cooling system. This pretty much sums up the entire cooling system of the car. We've got an expansion tank, we've got some crossover pipes, we've got two radiators, we've got some flexible hoses, and we've got these. These bits are what sits in the side pod and the radiators push into these. The radiators aren't solidly mounted because if they were, they would break. So we have them in these boxes and they float around. It lets this absorb the vibration and it looks after the radiator. If these break, it's not a big deal. But if the radiator cracks and coolant falls out, it's the end of the world. Now these have had quite a hard life. I don't remember them being this bad when we had the car. The top's been bent in and smashed flat with a hammer. All of them are broken. And I really don't think there's anything usable in either of these. I think we're just better off at remaking this entire assembly and getting it mounted onto the car. These mount to the nylon skid plates on the very outside of the car, so they flex themselves. They're allowed to move up and down. And like we said in the episode when we made that, that's so if the driver runs over a curb or hits something on the track, there's that little bit of give. You're not going to do a whole lot of damage. It's, it simply flexes up, the bodywork will flex, it's only fiberglass, and it allows these to move in the side pods without breaking anything off. That being said, I think this is the absolute first thing we need to do. We'll get these measured up, cut up some sheet, get them folded, and then we can worry about fitting all of these components. Fortunately, I've found a bit of aluminium sheet the right width to fold these out of, so that will make our life a little bit easier. These have been made in sections. It's got a top, a side, and a bottom, and these have all been riveted together. It it's, looks like a whole lot of work. So I'm hoping I can make the, at least the outside in one piece so we don't have to worry about the joints and the rivets and everything that goes along with that. These have been repaired many times. I've got bits riveted on. And there's been a bit welded on there. So they, these have had quite a, quite a tough life. As much as these hold the radiator, they're also they also protect, protect the driver somewhat from the heat of the radiator. Without these, the driver would simply be able to reach through the car and touch the radiators. They would heat up the cabin of the car even more than they already do. So directing the air into the radiator, keeping the airflow away from the driver and let it to come in the front of the side pod and out the rear of the side pod without getting too much inside the car. Also on the front of these is this bit, it's red. It's painted, so that maybe means that we'll have to get some paint on this thing, and maybe we'll have to speed up the process on the bodywork and get ready for the bodywork on the car. Well, I'm gonna lay these out now. I'm gonna try to transfer the measurements onto this sheet. We'll get the sheet cut up and folded, and then we'll have to put these angles in for where the radiator slides into. These have now been cut out, deburred, and are ready to be folded. Because they all fold the same way, I've put the marks on the inside with the protective film on the outside in the hope that that's a better finish. I was going to get all excited and get the bead roller out and put a pattern in the back of it, but it's detracting from what this thing should be. It should be period correct and that, that just wouldn't be right. But what I will do is put a small break in the back of this just to give that box a little bit more rigidity and stop it flapping around so much as the old ones did. You can sort of see the areas that have broken, it's just, just because it wasn't strong enough. So let's fold these up and we'll, we'll see if we can make a mess of them or not. I'm definitely not the sheet metal guy, but I'm, I'm gonna have a go today. It's definitely not ready to go on the scrap bin. It actually turned out okay. I, I don't think I'll get a pay rise for it, but that's exactly what we're after. And the side with a protective film is absolutely the nicest side. All we need to make sure is the radiator then fits inside that box. The height's pretty good to fit inside the side pod, but we just need to make sure that radiator can slide in as it will need to in the car. 
It's that height and the size is pretty good. We're just gonna put some aluminium channel in there now to hold the radiator where we need it. Some straps on the outside, then I think they're done and I think they've come up pretty well. These are now finished. The straps have been TIG welded in position. It's got the angle in there for the radiators to locate to, to feel the mounting holes have been drilled and even a hole for the bleed screw on the radiator. So that's another job off the list and I can throw these ratty old ones in the bin. The radiators supplied with the car are actually radiators that we made for it way back when. We used to buy the core by a couple of meters long, we'd cut it up and probably get 10 radiators out of it. Then we'd put the end tanks on. The end tanks, especially on this end, they're actually quite thick. They're three mil extruded aluminium because it actually gets the stone chips from the front tire. If we had, say, a 1.6 millimeter bit of aluminium folded, it would probably punch a hole in it. And we've seen the cars actually have similar tanks to that that have got holes in it from debris flicked up from the front tires. It's pretty simple the way these things operate. It's got a divider plate in the middle that forces the water all the way down the tubes, back down this tank and all the way back out again. Now these are fitted in V in the car. We have tried pumping it through one radiator then pumping it through the other and we really didn't get any benefit with this. Generally an engine will run more efficiently the more hotter, the more temperature you can get into it, the hotter you get it, the more power it'll make. The problem with this engine behind me is the cast iron cylinder head. Pre-ignition caused all sorts of issues, localized hotspots in the cooling system, and even problems with cavitation and localized boiling of the coolant, putting air bubbles into the system. So you can see on there, there's bleed screws. We've even plumbed them back to the header tank in some of the experimental things we were, we were trying with, but pre-ignition was certainly the limiting factor. Cooling system temperatures, didn't really matter so much as long as it was in the window that we had on the dyno for the correct tune-up. These radars are absolutely still serviceable. The fins are in pretty good condition. They were a little bit grotty, but we've cleaned them up and they are ready to go. We can now stick them in the boxes we've made and then they can be ready to be fitted to the car. But before we do that, we really need to get some of the pipe work in there. This is pretty much how the radiators sit in the car. And this is pretty much how the pipes sit in. These go between the fuel tank and the engine. They're a very tight fit. In fact, that's got a relief on the back of it there where the crank pulley has rubbed against it before and it's actually got a repair. Now, as far as flow goes, just think convection. As the water goes into the engine, it heats up, travels up. As we get it into the radiators, it cools down and goes back down. So with that, it's a pretty simple layout. We've got a temperature sensor in that elbow not overly accurate. If we got the temperature from the cylinder head, it would be a whole lot more accurate than a little bit further down the hose. But that's exactly how this car is. 
So we've got both bleed screws orientated up in the radiators. That's how we're gonna fit them into the boxes. But before we do that, we're gonna push these coolant pipes into the car, the hard, hard pipes, and then we can get the flexible ends on them. And then we can actually fit the radiators. The area for these hard pipes to mount into is between the fuel tank and the front of the engine. There's a small gap and that's to get both of these pipes into. So this pipe goes in from this side. This one hooks up to the water pump outlet. So if we feed that under the crankshaft pulley, across the chassis, and just, there's just enough room to get it in there. That's where that one sits. And the other one comes in from the other side because that spout is for the thermostat housing on the other side of the car. Now that the crossover pipes are in the car, we can actually fit the radiators into the box and then fix them to the car. So just making sure that the bleed screw goes to the top of the radiator box. We can gently slide these into position. That's where that goes. We can still access the bleed screw. I'll do the other one and then these can be fitted to the side pods and then we can fit up those hoses. Before we put these into place, just to make our life a little bit easier, I'm gonna cut the hoses for the end of the radiators. We've got the old ones, they are old. Not only that, they're pretty thick and pretty solid. And like I was saying earlier, the more flexible this setup is, the less likely it is to crack. So we've got some lovely light blue silicon hose that we're going to use instead of the old stuff. We can throw that in, in the bin with all the old rusty clamps. We've got new clamps for it. So we're gonna cut this hose up now, slip that on the pipes in the car. Then we can just slip those pipes straight onto the radiators as we put them into position. The radiators are now sitting in position with the crossover pipes in place. I'm going to leave all the clamps loose until I get all the hoses on. While I'm on this side of the car, we've got this hose to go on. It's, that's the old one. We're gonna replace it with a new one. But that's the one that goes to the water pump. So from the bottom hose of the radiators to the water pump. So I can push that on now. I'll sit some clamps in place and then we'll get onto the other side and get the thermostat housing in with its rubber pipe as well. I thought it was pretty cool when I went through the box of parts and found one of the thermostat housings we'd actually made back in the day. It was still fitted to the car. Of course, we mucked around a lot with these and I've actually still got a couple in the machine room that we've experimented with and we've cut up and we've done different stuff. But we've we tried them with thermostats, without thermostats, different temperature thermostats, different heights of the head. We also, the orientation where the radiator hose goes on instead of dumping it in, we found that if we swirled it around it would help separate the air bubbles from the coolant and then that goes off to the header tank to separate properly. Didn't necessarily find any massive power gains, but we felt that we made the cooling system that little bit more efficient, predictable, and long-term was a much, much better thing. So now that we've got one of the OG thermostat housings that we made, we're gonna fit this onto the car and then we can get the flexible pipe on between this, the header tank, and that last crossover pipe. This bit is the expansion tank or the header tank or whatever you want to call it. It's where the radiator cap goes. This sits between the thermostat housing on this outlet and the engine crossover pipe on the bottom. This allows room for the expansion and contraction of the coolant as it heats up and cools down. And this is also where the air bubbles are separated from the coolant and allowed to breathe out the cap when it becomes pressurized. 
We can now fit this. We've got the new bits of hose cut up, new hose clamps, and we can get this in the car. The entire cooling system is now fitted to the car. Everything's in there. I've gone through and tightened all the clamps up. I made sure there was no stress on any of the pipes, no push or pull. Everything was as relaxed as it could be to prevent any failures, whether that be the mountings on the radiators or a pipe cracking. We want everything to remain relaxed, let the flexible pipes flex and take the stress off everything else. The coolant we're gonna use in this car is of course the KCK All Performance Coolant. It's a long life coolant. I never want to have to change this coolant again. Coolant in race cars is normally very neglected. It's difficult to change and it makes a mess. So it's therefore neglected and it's probably left in there a whole lot longer than it should. But this is a long life coolant. It can sit in there for years and years and years and it will offer the protection it needs as well as the boiling point and all that sort of standard stuff you come to expect from a quality coolant. That being said, I'm going to fill this cooling system up we're done for this episode. I'll see you on the next episode and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks for following.